Hey everyone, my name is Rudy and we are here. This is going to be week two of our UBL matches against Crystal Key and the Adelaide Honchcrows. And from the beginning, this was not the best matchup at all. I did my best, I tried to match up as well as I could, but she has so many options. Between Trick Room, Camera, Shenanigans, I tried to go Trick Room myself because she had options that could outspeed my entire team. I think the prep was fairly solid. I do have a couple uh, changes that I would have made definitely that I'll get to at those points. But overall, even if this is not the best matchup, it is definitely Winnable. So the main concept behind this team is that the Tauros is scarfed and they can outspeed anything except the Alola Chu in terrain. But also I do have a Dragon Dance Latios that also outspeeds everything except the Alolan Raichu in terrain. Dragon Dance, Earthquake, Shadow Claw, and Hidden Power Fire, which pretty much just takes on her team after the Iraq when it goes down. And my thinking was that whatever team composition was, either Tauros could poke holes for the Latios, or Latios could poke holes for the Tauros late game. But either way, that's kind of how I wanted to play it. But yeah, we're gonna get into the battle now. I'm just gonna lead off with Delphox. Again, this Delphox is here for the Alolan Muck. It has the Culverberry Will-O-Wisp specifically for that. And she ends up leading with, with the Tapu Goko. Now, um, my thinking here was I just wanted to send this Delphox out here first just to kind of scout out because now that without the Alola Muck here, my honest thinking was that it's going to be most useful just to uh, scout out whatever's going on, maybe get some damage in where needed and again, open the door for, for the Latios or the Tauros. So I just go off with the Fire Blast. I was honestly expecting the Alola Raichu to come in uh, immediately. That top of Hogo lead that immediately just signaled to me that she was going to try to get some damage off early with the Alola Raichu. She reveals that this is a trick room, so she told me later uh, afterwards that half the team is trick room, half the team is uh, just outspeeding my entire team. But now, at this point, I'm just thinking I really can't switch out because uh, giving her free turns of trick room is giving her free damage onto my team, even though uh, I can threaten this Jellison out with a Jolteon or something like that. So I figured I would just use Delphox to get a Will-O-Wisp off, as she expects me to switch out and goes for her own Will-O-Wisp. So here I just stand, I try to preserve this thing just to stall out trick room, and and this is just me not paying attention because um, I will end up going for a wish. And if I'd seen uh, that, if, if I'd really paid attention to that damage calc to, and to how much damage that did, I would have been able to see that I wouldn't take another one or it would have been a roll and I could have just switched out to something that would handle this better and even just take a wish here. But uh, I stayed in thinking that I would take it and I don't. So completely wasted wish. Uh, and it's a and I'm in a bad situation because there is uh, still a turn of trick room left, basically giving this gel some free damage if it wants it. But I just go into uh, a mon that would threaten it out the most. And in this situation, I'm I'm really I mean obviously I want to get damage off on this gel but I also really wanted to bait in the camera up uh, because this because this Jolteon has hidden power water, which it does a whole heck of a lot to Mega Camera. So I, I consistently go for Shadow Balls, just trying to bait in that uh, Mega Camera. And um, Shadow Ball does a heck of a lot, but obviously not enough. And um, there we see the leftovers, so it's not going to be anything crazy threatening. But uh, this U turn does a whole heck of a lot. And I know Jolteon isn't crazy. Um, crazy physically defensive, but it does kind of lead me to think that it's going to be like a physical one with Brave Bird for my, for my Venusaur, but either way, I can't think about that now. I just go, try to go out into um, my Meloetta as this alone Raichu comes in. This Meloetta is Assault Vested and it can pretty much take anything as she pops the Alola Raichu Z move and uh, it's going to take a while. This is a very long animation, but Meloetta takes this like a gosh dang champion. Um, it's a super uh, specially defensive set with the, with the Assault Vest. And um, this is pretty much where things kind of get really weird. Because um, this is a bit of a misplay here. I go for the U-turn and I'm a negative attack nature. I believe I'm calm plus special defense minus uh, attack and it ends up taking the u-turn which was horrible so that's a bit of a minor misplay but it really sets me up for a major misplay because now i can't really switch into anything well because i need everything to be reasonably healthy and this is absolutely where having a delphox would have been great um 
to kind of uh, sag off here or get some damage off or whatever, but I go into my Venusaur, and I know Venusaur can take this thing at, at about 50% and just uh, take this thing out, but letting that much damage to get on that Venusaur really just kind of was the, uh, was the thing that sets everything else in motion. I could have just taken the KO in front of me with Shadow Ball. If I just clicked Shadow Ball, then I would have been in a great sp spot. I could have U-turned next turn. But also, um, that Alolan Raichu lived on five. And pretty sure that it's just a roll. I could have really opened the door if I had just gone for Shadow Ball, been able to take it out. But ultimately, at the end of the day, letting that uh, Venusaur take that much damage that early is really what ended up costing me, and I, and I really didn't have any other good switch-ins to a to an Alolan Raichu. Um, I mean, obviously, I, I, I had switch-ins that would have been able to take it out, but, but nothing that would take it well enough that I wouldn't be hurt for the rest of the game. And now I'm out here with Jolteon. A few turns have passed, but I'm out here again with Jolteon. And um, the Kartana's already signaling Scarf with the way that the Meloetta scared it out. And... We do, a we do a little switching around, but the Jolteon's in, so again, I'm just trying so hard to bait in the the um, Mega Camera and go for the Hidden Power Water. Uh, a Shadow Ball plus Hidden Power Water is 110% going to take it out, and I keep trying so hard to do that. But uh, this but this uh, Top of Coco, you can just eat those hits. It takes two of them very, very well. And... Uh, I end up just sacking off the Meloetta here because I knew the U-turn was coming and it does give me a little bit of switching initiative But now at this point, this is where uh, everything just I just kind of snowballs on me. Uh, I go into this and 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 this was just me like not playing the best. I uh, I calped out Night Slash, but I forgot to calc out um, what a What a like, knockoff would do and I give it a free beast boost. I um, my Dragon Dancing, Latios just goes down, and also, I bring in, this, this is my last chance, but obviously it's not going to be able to do anything. There was no reason, absolutely no reason for this Tauros not to pack Flamethrower, uh, except for me just uh, not bringing Flamethrower. And uh, that also super cost me the game, so even after uh, that huge misplay with the Meloetta, pivoting into the Venusaur, I still had a chance to win this if the Tauros just had Flamethrower. Um, this was still incredibly winnable for me. This was incredibly winnable for me, but now at this point, uh, Kartana outspeeds my entire team, 100%, and uh, is just getting Beast Boost off uh, with every turn. And that's where it just kind of snowballed on me. So we did start off the season with a 5-0 win, and um, and come in next week with a 5-0 loss. In the end, she just had a ton of prep foil. She had a lot of fast threats that can outspeed my entire team, but at the same time, I really could not reliably go for Trick Room, or else I'd be setting up her own team. So at the moment right now, I am chalking it up to a not great uh, matchup in general. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching. We will be back. We're going to recover from a pretty, um, from a pretty not great loss. Next week, we'll be taking on, I believe, Serene Grace and the Chicago Shaman Sky. Uh, that's going to be a whole lot of fun. I already looked ahead a little bit at that prep, and I did get to see her week one battle. Her team is definitely scary, but I feel like we match up decently well. I'm pretty excited about it in general. Once again, thank you guys uh, so much for watching. I'll be once again. Okay.